and we're off. So I am here tonight for Bartlett Elementary. And so it is opening in the fall of 24, as I mentioned, August of 24. Specifically, it will be located on Cielo Drive in Conroe. This is just a little bit north of Pine Acre Trails. It is located uh, in what is called the Cielo subdivision. And we're excited about opening it up for you. Just a few things. We have a committee is composed of 44 different people that have worked for many months. We have many parents that have been involved. We've really worked on this to some degree since August and in other areas since uh, January of last year. And so we're excited. I have a lot of things to show you tonight. Remember this will be recorded and it will also be available on our website. So our goal in the process is to do what we can do to populate the initial attendance boundary zone for Janet K. Bartlett Elementary, just like every other campus within the district had to have a, a boundary established for it, so is Bartlett Elementary. We're also trying to do, and what is a challenge with the number of students in the area, is to come up with a zone that also allows and preserves some avail availability for future growth within the area, uh, within Bartlett Elementary itself. Bartlett Elementary will have 950 seats, and it'll be two-story. It'll be very similar to Gordon Reed, Hope Elementary, which is in the Caney Creek area, Gordon Reed, of course, which is in the Conroe feeder system. So if you look here tonight on your screen, you will see it is now November 7th. And as we go through this November 7th, uh, I note, note on Thursday night of this week, two days from now, we'll be in person to present uh, scenarios that I will show you tonight at Austin Elementary at six o'clock. I'm going to do this tonight. It'll also be on the webinar, so you can go back and look at it at your leisure if that serves you the best. I will show you an important thing right here. If you look right here at uh, Conroe ISD at uh, the boundary tile right here, what you'll see, if you can click on that, it will take you to information on the, uh, on the boundary process. Right here where it says Conroe ISD Attendance Boundary Committee, you can click on that at any time. Some of the things that you will see within it include uh, the information on uh, last time we had a webinar, which was on October 5th, the presentation notes from when we were at Austin Elementary back on October 12th. The uh, webinar is also converted to Spanish. Also, you will see here, if you want to see what the current uh, maps look like for the entire Caney Creek, Caney Creek High School Elementary feeder and a large portion of the eastern side of the Conroe High you, feeder, you can click right here on the current feeder zone map. Also, you will see, if you go to our website, you will see right here under consideration, uh, two uh, scenarios that are under consideration, and you will see the 25 that are no longer under consideration that we have worked on over the last few months. But those are there for your leisure. I will go through them quickly tonight, but you can view those at any time on the website. Uh, also, I think it's important, really almost every question that we've ever had asked of us throughout this process, and we've done it many times, they are available, and you can see those uh, at the, uh, the Conroe ISD website for the boundaries, and you can click on these questions, and you'll see answers that will be right there for you, and I'm hoping that will be very helpful for you. Also, uh, under Submit Zoning Feedback, you can offer feedback if you have uh, ideas you want the uh, committee to, sh to see. If you want to add that, you can add that under the Zoning Feedback tab. Here is uh, one of the first looks at a computer rendering of the front entrance of Janet K. Bartlett Elementary. And you can see it right here. You can see uh, it's similar to some of the other places that we have, including uh, Hope Elementary, Gordon Reed, Hines. So uh, you can see what will be a unique entrance right here, a little uh, uh, arched entrance. Here is a current picture of October 23. If you want to look at it and see what it looks like, Right now, in October of 2023, uh, this is the look. This is looking from the south. Behind me would be the airport, Pine Acre Trails. And as I said, I am set up right here in Cielo Drive. Just a few things we covered in our last webinar, but I will cover again. Note, uh, as far as the boundary process being challenging, we understand how important it is where kids go to school and for families. Uh, we have a lot of schools that are over capacity that we're trying to assist in this process. And we're trying to accomplish that while at the same time realizing that it's important where kids go to school. We want to be able to accomplish what is needed to help overcrowding at many campuses across the Caney Creek and Conroe feeder while moving a minimum number of kids that we can do to make that happen. Also, I would tell you what is challenging that's specific to this uh, specific area 
is number one is that it's difficult to move kids in the Austin zone to Bartlett because of the nature of how it is on 105. Many of the students that attend Austin Elementary live to the east of Austin Elementary. And uh, so it, that's that's a challenge to, not to drive by Austin to get to Bartlett. Also, it's uh, this is the last elementary school that we have coming in this area for some time. So it's really important to the committee and we put a lot into this to make sure we get it right. I wanna show you this slide, if you look at this slide and what is important to look here, uh, it just shows you that the total number of people is, is large that is coming to our school district. They wanna be a part of what we have. And if you look at it, you can see the areas that are in dark or red, for example, Patterson, Austin, Milam, the number of students that are represented in the next uh, eight, nine years, those are all equal to a new elementary school. If you look here, what separates us is that San Jacinto sends 1,728 students. That's almost equivalent to two of our current elementary schools. And then you can see the areas that are in orange. Those are approaching a school, maybe three quarters or 80% of a school. Anderson, 712, Gordon Reed, 825, Wilkinson, and then you can see the other areas where a lot of kids are coming, including Reeves, Houston, and Runyon. So we'll talk more about that, and I'll give you some numbers. So our goal is to present the committee a recommendation to go before the school board of trustees in January. So these are some of our goals. We take these goals seriously. We've worked on them for months. But our goal is to provide a recommendation to the school board in January. I will tell you, if you look at these tiles, uh, all, all these things are important. They're things that we work through. I will tell you that uh, geographical proximity is part of what we look at. Although sometimes it may be closer and easier to get to one school, even though I may live closer to another school. We also take into account in this process because we have so many campuses that are over capacity, uh, what is going to be needed as far as how much they can handle a particular school for additional portable buildings if that's needed. And that is not our goal or desire, but it's something that we have to take into consideration. This is a look, a quick glance at the elementary feeder within Caney Creek. And you can see uh, we have a number of schools that are over capacity, particularly of interest within the Caney Creek feeder are Creighton Elementary, which is at 152% of capacity. Creighton is a smaller school with a capacity of 650 students and Austin Elementary, which is growing quickly and has a large swath of area that's expected to grow rapidly and is currently at 116% of capacity with seven portables. If you go to the Conroe feeder, you can see that we have a large number of schools that are over capacity. And this particular zoning process, we're looking closely at Anderson, we're looking closely at Patterson, we're looking closely at Reeves, Runyon, Wilkinson, a little bit at Rice, so there's a lot of areas we're trying to solve and make things better for. And so I'm going to give you more information, but this is our current status as far as our capacity of campuses within Caney Creek and Conroe High Peters for elementary. Here's a quick look at the current map. I think it's important to look periodically at the current map to refresh your memory of where we go now. And that makes understanding the scenarios that the committee has come forward with the two of the 27 that are currently in play, it makes them easier to understand. So just for ease of view, if you look at this, I would say if you look here, if you see right here in the uh, yellow, this is uh, Bartlett Elementary right here. This is the Patterson Zone, Austin, Creighton, Milam is blue, Hope in the purplish color. At the bottom is San Jack, Wilkinson. You can see B.B. Rice to the left or west of 45. Right here in the middle along 75 is Armstrong in pink. Runyon in orange, you can see Sam Houston in green, and Reeves in blue, and Anderson in gray. That's just a quick tour of the district. Uh, I want to show you, this is one of the two that are currently alive right now. And you can see this is scenario 7.1.1. And uh, you can also look at our website and see version 7 and 7.1. 7.1.1 is an offshoot of some of those. And if you look at it, uh, you can see all the boxes we've taken the time the team to show you specifically what areas would potentially uh, that are potentially currently being vetted to move from one school to another to help with overcrowding across a number of campuses. So just a couple of things to uh, show you to stand out. 
is if you look at this, we try, we're working hard to not move anyone in the Southern Caney Creek Elementary feeder that was moved as part of the rezoning for Hope Elementary. You can see here, we're trying to make choices that appear that make sense as I try to navigate the roads to get from uh, to Creighton and to Austin. You can see up here in this area up top, everywhere you see that shaded is a fast growth area. I'm showing the area up top that is this brownish color because that is the potential home and the potential zone for the initial attendance boundary for Bartlett Elementary. Here is 9.1.2. I will uh, pause on it for a second. Remember, you can look at it at your leisure on the uh, Conroe Ostia Boundary website, and you can pull it up at any time. But here's a quick look. And so this is 9.1.2 and how it contrasts to what I showed you earlier on 7.1.1. Once again, trying to make good decisions, trying to uh, find a way based on what we have available for capacity in the near future to make decisions that work well for families, works effectively for kids, and will fit within the building capacity that we have. So some common questions we have. So the most common question we get when we go out and do presentations is, you know, how are school sites chosen? And there, there are a lot of ways that school sites are chosen, but I will tell you demographic reports are a big part of it. Uh, where's the growth coming? And I showed you on version 7.1.1 and 9.1.2 where we see the growth is coming. So it's important to look and help for overcrowding that we have now while taking into account where kids are coming and they're coming quickly. So we make good decisions that will allow us to go as long as we possibly can with the seats we have uh, to make zoning work for everybody. But you know, for land cost, roadway access, a big part of it uh, in the Candy Creek and Conroe area too is availability of utilities, which is why you see so many schools in the Candy Creek feeder, for example, that are in the uh, triangle right there at Grangerland between 3083, 2090, and 1485. Uh, another question we get often is, we specifically purchased our home to go to this school. We understand that's important. It's important to us. That's why when we rezone out of necessity, we try to keep numbers uh, as minimal as we can. But as a fast growing district, like other fast growing districts, Periodically, we have to rezone uh, due to capacity issues. And really, every time that we have a new campus, we have to establish an initial boundary for that campus. In this case, we're doing this for Bartlett Elementary. Our initial focus is pre-K through four. We would look at pre-K through four would be our initial focus. So we're excited about that. How likely is it that my neighborhood will be rezoned? Uh, we will know once we go through the process. Remember, ultimately, it is the decision of the school board, and then we anticipate that decision being made in January. But you can look at the scenarios, all 27 scenarios, the ones that are no longer in play and the ones that are in play currently, and it will give you a good idea of where we are at this moment. Uh, so special programs, we will determine those administratively at the end. Once we see what the numbers look like and where we have availability to fit certain special programs, uh, our goal is to have students attend a special program at their home campus or close to their home campus, but we will determine that administratively at the end. So here's a question we get a lot is, what if my child, for example, what if my child is going into their last year at Austin Elementary? So if they're going into fourth grade at Austin Elementary, but say they were rezoned to Bartlett Elementary, what we will normally do is space is available, a parent can request a transfer, transfer. And provided that the uh, parent can provide transportation to and from, we will allow a child to complete his or her last year at a school, for example, in this case, a fourth grade student at the campus of which they request to transfer to. In this example, I used uh, Austin Elementary. Another scenario would be if, if I'm a family and I have a child who I have an incoming fourth grader at Austin Elementary. But say I also have an incoming second grader at Austin Elementary. And normally, if space is available and provided that uh, you can provide transportation, normally we will allow those transfers for a child to finish out his or her last year and potentially a sibling also. So how often might an area be rezoned? We try not to do it any more often than we have to. We had to rezone recently, uh, you know, Hope Elementary and the Candy Creek feeder. Gordon Reed on the western edge of the Conroe feeder. So 
this particular scenario, we were not able to impact rezoning on the west side of the Conroe feeder. For example, Giesinger is not involved, Gordon Reed and Stewart. So uh, we try to rezone no more often than we have to. And we've really tried as a uh, committee not to rezone people that are in the southern portion of the Cannon Creek feeder because that rezoning occurred in the year 2021 when we opened up Hope Elementary. So, but we try not to rezone any more often than we have to. Can the community vote on a scenario? Well, the answer is uh, the board makes the decision. You can always submit feedback through our submit feedback button on the community webinar page. And uh, all that information does go to the school board when they make a decision. That is what I have tonight. It is, uh, we will take this information. It'll be translated into English. It'll be available for uh, view anytime you like. I encourage you though, if you wanna watch the webinar, I think it's helpful. Everything almost that I put in the webinar is also available at the, at the attendance boundary website for Janet K. Bartlett Elementary. So thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate you. Uh, it is the uh, 7th. We will be in person at Austin Elementary on the 9th at 6 o'clock to look at some scenarios on poster boards. And you're certainly welcome to join us then also. And that is what I have. Thank you. Have a great evening.